Now I'd like to give you a brief overview of my workflow process in creating the song Pororoka, which is the title track for my album. I first started this song in 2008, and it morphed into something completely different over the years. I'm going to take you through a few different versions. The first version I want to show you sounds completely different from the result. I had decided I wanted to try writing a track that was in 7-4 because most electronic music is in 4-4 and I was feeling very avant-garde at the time. As you can hear, the beat is very fast and I'm using a preset in Live's Impulse which is triggered by my MIDI performance. Sometimes I like to add the random MIDI effect before my drums at a low chance rate to add some variation, or add a plugin like Replicant to the end of the chain. Here's another beat I made that I converted into audio. Here's a synth patch that I froze from another synthesizer and bass and synth strings. I also added winds, sound effects, and an arpeggiated synth sound. The Ableton Live effects are really great for sweetening the sound. I always use the reverbs, filters, and delays to start with, just to get an idea of what the sound might be like with these effects, and then I might move to a different plugin later. This project is still pretty low on effects, but I'll add more in just a bit. I color-coded the clips so that I could tell which ones were similar, and then took all of these elements and tried to put them into some sort of structure in the session view. If I trigger each scene here, you can hear a bit of the structure of the song come to life. The great part about working this way is that I can audition the way the parts sound played in the context of a song format without having to do all the work to arrange them. When I hit the next scene, all of the clips come in on the downbeat so I don't have to be precise. Now that I have these great controllers like the APC40 and Launchpad, it makes recording to the arrangement view a breeze. It sure beats cutting and pasting to make an arrangement, like I did in the past. The process of arranging used to stop me from completing as much music, but now I approach arranging in a very different way, like I'm jamming on the song instead of traditionally arranging it. The next session is in the arrangement view of live. I recorded my jamming on the session view side into the arrangement view by pressing the global record button to get the basic structure of the song. I then needed to find a spot for my friend Kathy's vocals. Kathy recorded a few different style vocals and then I harmonized them in Melodyne. Here's the Melodyne session. I simply imported her vocals and then added various intervals on top to make it sound more choir-like. 
I also added random offset to pitch center so that there were no phase cancellation issues. By making some of the vocals very slightly different in pitch, it makes it easier for it to sound like a choir, a super easy and pro trick. Afterwards, I brought all of the Melodyne vocals back into live and put them into the arrangement I had jammed on. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I brought the session into Logic to prepare it for mixing and mastering.